Dean, how did you end up here at Manchester Cathedral? The story goes back to 1997, when I was still a parish priest in Durban, South Africa. Um, actually, Peter Maritzburg, South Africa, when I was um, planning to take a sabbatical, which I eventually did in the city of Sheffield. It was a sabbatical arranged by the then Archdeacon of Sheffield. Uh, my friend, the Archdeacon, eventually became a bishop in the Diocese of Manchester, and we had become good friends. And it was at the, in the middle of the year 2000, when I was still in South Africa, that, that, that my friend would, would, would by that stage become a bishop in, and he had come to visit me in South Africa on holiday, stayed with me a night, and in our conversations, after a few drinks, said, well, Rogers, would you consider coming to work in England? Um, I sort of rather shyly said, possibly, uh, rather tentatively, and, uh, and a, f a few weeks later, he had returned home to, to England and sent me uh, an email uh, suggesting that he had a parish that he thought would be very suitable for me. Uh, I laughed it off in the way that Sarah laughed when the angels came to visit. Um, but it so happened that I was visiting Manchester in July uh, 2000, and Stephen said, well, Rogers, uh, come and look at the parish anyway. There's nothing for you to worry about, and I did. And when I came to Manchester to stay with the Lowe's, found that I was, um, was, was, was set up virtually, uh, in that I, was, I found myself in, a, in an interview for a job rather than simply going to look at a church building. So you were conned into this? I was kind of conned into coming. So I came to a parish in Manchester, in South Manchester, at the end of, the, at the end of 2000. And, uh, and, and so that was, that, that, that was my, 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 the beginnings of my time in Manchester. And the beginning of your journey to Manchester Cathedral? It was, indeed. And uh, how have you taken to Manchester Cathedral? Because it must be an enormous responsibility and a role. Yes, well, firstly, there is the enormity of the building. Um, I wasn't too phased by that, simply because my, my, my last South African parish was quite a large parish, a large church building, and it operated on a kind of cathedral scale, uh, so I wasn't too phased by that. Uh, but the role is an enormous one, was very different, is very different. Uh, it, it, it is a role that... That, that stretches beyond the cathedral. So it's quite important that, that one understands that I'm not the Dean of Manchester Cathedral as, as such, full stop. I'm the Dean of Manchester, which means that my, my, my work, my, my involvement, my activity, my ministry extends into the city of Manchester, and dare I say even to the city region, uh, the area that uh, we cover as a diocese, which spans all of Greater Manchester uh, and parts of um, uh, Rossendale. Is there any comparison, or is Manchester, Durban, your previous experience, South Africa, are these worlds apart? Uh, yes and no. Durban is a bustling city, much bigger than Manchester. Uh, Durban is, about, uh, is a city of about three and a half million to four, four million people. Uh, with a fair amount of poverty, uh, serious poverty, uh, although we have poverty in Manchester as well, we have a fair amount of deprivation in the city. So similar in those ways, uh, uh, and, and Manchester is a bit of a microcosm of Durban in many uh, South African cities because we're a very multicultural city. In fact, we're a city built on immigration. Um, we have a very large uh, diaspora uh, from around the world, represented in this city, uh, folk from uh, from East Africa, from Asia, from from Af uh, from Africa itself, and and and, and Europe, of course. Uh, so so similarities but differences. So, despite the contrast, you've actually found a connection. Yes, I I, I certainly connected with the city because it's such a diverse city. Um, 
and I'm a, I'm a theologian of a liberal persuasion, and of course it's, it's quite a liberal city uh, in that sense. Uh, but also it's a city architecturally uh, that is a lovely combination of uh, old and new. Uh, it's, it's an old city, uh, obviously not as old as Salford, but old enough, uh, but also uh, fairly modern. Uh, certainly post the, the IRA bomb, uh, the modernization, the rebuilding, the regeneration, has had that lovely sort of combination of old and new, young and old, uh, rich and poor, uh, living side by side. And uh, I, I find the diversity very attractive and very energizing. Why are we sitting here making a television program for Manchester Cathedral? Well, that's a very, very good question. Uh, we are here because uh, we are a cathedral in what we would like to think uh, is in England's second city. Um, um, we are the powerhouse of the north of England, and, and growingly so. And I have to say that this cathedral, uh, in many ways, um, uh, operates and, and ministers uh, um, on, 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 on a level that is, that is on par with some of the great cities uh, of this country. Um, we punch way above our weight, we are increasingly better connected uh, with the life of our city. And when I say that, I mean uh, commercial world, the political life of the city, the civic life of the city, uh, the communities of the city, uh, across cultures and races, and so on and so forth. And, um, and we, have great, we have great things that go on here. Um, we, 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 are, uh, we have a story to tell uh, there is our history, but also where we are now and where we hope to go. So why television? Uh, well, I think television is a, is a, is a great medium to, to, to share the story in, 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 in narrative form, in visual form. And there's lots of great beauty in this place that we want to share with others. Uh, and of course, television uh, is very accessible and, um, and people can, can switch on on television switch on to a television channel and, 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 and listen to and watch, uh, take in what we're all about. And I think it's a great medium uh, to do that uh, through. In the future, would you like to do more and would you like to do more things like you did with the BBC, inviting them in at Easter time and then, of course, going on recording elements for the BBC Songs of Praise? Well, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not terribly sure that <clears throat> some members of the community would like the BBC here terribly regularly, but it is quite disruptive and it's quite a, a heavy program having television crews uh, in the cathedral uh, taking over the place and, and taking over services because it's all about broadcast rather than sort of congregational worship as such, which happens a bit more leisurely. Uh, but, but the answer is yes, of course. Uh, we like, we like uh, the BBC, ITV or whoever to come in here more often, uh, simply because it's, 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 it's a way in which we are telling the story, not just to the people, uh, the people of Manchester, but to people beyond uh, the city and beyond the shores uh, at the same time. And, and television, certainly on, 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 on YouTube and, and things like that, uh, ensure that, that the medium goes uh, international. And that's great for the gospel. It's great for the church. It's great for sharing the Christian faith. And it's great for sharing the Christian faith in the kind of holistic way in which we seek to live it, understand it, and embrace it.